ago, I used to hear people say, people that uh, come to church on Sunday morning love the church. People that come to church on Sunday night love the pastor. People that come to church on Wednesday night love Jesus. I don't know, I don't know how true that is. But that was, sounds good, Pastor. Yeah, it sounds, sounds pretty good. good. Anyway, praise God. Turn uh, with, with me tonight over to Ephesians. Yeah. Book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians, chapter 6. I'm going to pray before we get going here tonight. Just open yourself up to the Lord tonight. Amen. Let him, let him minister to you, Lord. speak to you tonight. You know, Paul prayed over in here in this very book, Ephesians, over in chapter 1. He prayed for the church, although they were already saved. You know, when you're born into the kingdom of God, you're like a, a newborn baby in the natural realm. Yeah. Peter says in his writings that we're to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. Yes. In other areas of the scripture, Paul talks about people coming to a, a spiritual growth place on a level where they can have, they can eat the meat of the word. Amen. And so uh, growing spiritually is just like growing naturally. Right. And uh, I, I want to keep growing. Yeah. I want to keep growing uh, into the image of Christ. I'm not there yet. How about you? Amen. 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 But uh, tonight, the Lord wants to help us grow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And He wants to, uh, to show us things that we need to know in order not only just to grow, but to be effective right now. The one thing I love about Jesus is He's not somebody I just have to look forward to in the future or I can look back in the past. He's a right now God. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. He'll walk with us if we'll walk with Him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, Father, tonight we open our hearts to You. We pray, according to Ephesians 1, the prayer that Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus, we pray for us, the church of Madeira right now. We pray that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that you, the Father of glory, would give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we might know the hope of your calling and the richness of the glory of your inheritance in the saints. Lord, I pray tonight that you'll help us not to try to just absorb this in our mind. But God, I pray for a divine explosion of yes. revelation in yes. our hearts. Yes. Because it's when we get revealed to us, just like it was revealed to Peter that you were the Christ, the Son of the living God, that that word becomes powerful. It becomes something of substance, a tangible spiritual substance, yes. substance that we can walk in and use in our life and see you manifest yourself in our lives, to us and through us. Lord, we pray tonight... For Brother Javier Garcia, he called and asked that we pray for him. He's been uh, struggling with the flu. And for the others, Lord, that we pray for this morning, we just agree in Jesus' name for his healing. We ask you to touch him. And Father, just minister to him tonight, not only physically, but may he receive your word as well. I don't know if he's watching us online, but Father, just bless him tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen? Yes. Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, the letter to the uh, Ephesus church, the theme of this book primarily is the glory. It's that word right there. Amen. Glory, the glorious church. Now what is the glorious church? The glory of God is all of, that God is and all that God has. It's the, it's the essence, it's the presence. Uh, you know, when uh, Lazarus had died, and Martha, his sister, came and and, you know, told and said to Jesus, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. You know, she was disappointed and frustrated and so forth. And Jesus looked at her and he said, Martha, didn't I tell you uh, that, you know, if you would just believe, you'd see the glory of God. Amen. Yeah. And then, of course, he, you know, she, and he told her, your brother's going to rise again. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, I know he's going to rise again at the end of the world when the resurrection happens. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Amen. He is the glory. The Bible says he's the very outshining glory of the Father. He is glory now, and glory lives in us. You are actually the temple of his glory. He's in you. Jesus is in you by the person and power of the Holy Spirit. You are a glorious temple. And that's why the Bible says that when Jesus returns, he's going to take with him a glorious church. Yes. A glorious church. A church that has yielded to him to the point where they are manifesting who he is in word and in deed. 
Now, I didn't get an amen on that because we look at ourselves based on who we are as a human being in the flesh. <clears throat> but God doesn't do that. Come on. He doesn't do that. He sees you and I in Christ. Hallelujah. He sees you from the, the, the reality of who you really are spiritually. Now, we're humans. We have a body. We have a soul that, and a mind that has to be renewed and all these things that are working in our life. But God doesn't identify with our humanity. He knows we're human. He identifies with us spiritually. And the Bible says that John Purcell, when John Purcell as a little boy kneeled down at that pew in that Assembly of God church with the, convic the true sincere conviction of Jesus in his heart, and he asked Jesus to forgive him of his sins and come into his life, and there was this lifting off. There was something that happened to me spiritually that you can't explain with your mouth. That's right. There was a change that took place inside of me, and I became born again. Amen. The scriptures say, Colossians, that when that happens, that we, that old person that wasn't saved, that wasn't God's child, wasn't uh, uh, born again, that that person dies, and their life becomes hid with God in Christ. Right. Amen. right. Hallelujah. Amen. So when God looks at you, he sees you in light of his son and what his son has done for you. Amen. He knows you make mistakes. He knows you have bad habits. He knows that at times you just open your mouth to change feet. Come on. Yeah. All yeah. Amen. Yeah. But that's not what he's going by. That's what religion goes by. Religion, dead religion is always trying to obtain that place in God to be accepted. And you can't obtain that on your own because God is perfect. And his standard is perfection. Yes. And that's why he had to send a perfect one Amen. from heaven to come in here to face all of the tests that Adam and Eve failed. And all of us have failed and passed those tests without sin. And then willingly, out of a heart of love, lay his life down willingly for us. And give himself as an offering and a sacrifice so that the Father could say, that is, how can I turn that sacrifice away? That is a perfect love sacrifice, and he has willingly given himself to pay the price for them. So I accept that sacrifice, and I, I uh, account it unto them as though they've never sinned. Amen. Amen. See, I don't have to go before the Father on my track record. I get to go before him on Jesus' track record. Amen. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't, I'm not you know, honest with myself if I have a wrong heart or I sin. Amen. The Holy Spirit convicts us. We admit it, we deal with it, and we move on. But you and I have been born again. We are a child of God. And the Bible says that His life and nature, or His glory is another way of saying it. The Holy Spirit and glory are interchangeable. Amen. Glory of God is not a something, it's a person. Amen. And the Holy Spirit lives in us. The Bible says we are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. And so what the enemy wants you to think is that you're just an old, an old person who's trying to somehow make heaven and God's just having mercy on you. You know, you really, uh, you know, it's kind of like you said, well, yeah, I guess I'll let him in. <laughs> That's not it. Yeah. Oh. God loves you. His love for you is greater than any sin or mistake you might ever make in your life. Yeah. And all we have to be, do is be honest and humble enough to admit we're a sinner and we need a Savior. Amen. Amen. Jesus. And humble ourselves before Him and say, Lord, I give you my life. See, He can't give, Jesus can't give you His life until you give Him your life. That's right. Because He's given you a free will. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be stubborn and become an enemy of God and, and just be hard-headed about it and go to hell, He'll let you. He doesn't want you to. He'll do everything he can to try to keep you from doing that and to try to bring you to a place of repentance. But if you are just going to do your own thing, God will, well, he has to let it happen. Yes. Because he's made us free moral agents. Amen. Yeah. Come on, are you here today? Yes. I didn't plan on saying any of that, but I'm not going to take any of that. The point, the bottom line point is what I'm saying here is, is that God wants us to walk in, the Bible puts it this way, from glory to the glory, yeah. the glory, yeah. the glory. What does that mean? How many of you know the older you get, the more you look like the parents? <laughs> he wants you as you grow to look more and more yeah. and more and more and more like the parents. Yeah. 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 Come on. Thank you, Lord. 
And it's not as hard as we make it. Right. How many of you, when you were growing up as a kid, you'd get up in the morning and you'd go, mm, mm, mm. I'm trying to grow. Yeah. I'm going to make it. Right. No, you just got up and went in there and ate your post toasties or whatever it was you ate. Anybody remember post toasties? Oh, yes. Some of you young folks will catch up one day. You know some of these things. What was yours? Peanut butter captain crunch. Peanut butter captain crunch. Oh, That's some nutritious food right oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> we just we just we just lived our life. We ate. Amen. We ate, we exercised, we did whatever, made the teachers miserable at school, whatever your favorite sport was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you just grew. Right. Amen. Amen. So if you just walk with Jesus, he'll help you to grow. Yes. Yes. Praise yeah. God. But I want to talk tonight about uh, prayer. Mm, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We have to understand that God, once God says something, it's true for eternity. When God created Adam and Eve, He gave them dominion. As a matter of fact, the first thing He said to them, or about them, was let them have dominion. Now, what does dominion mean? It means to dominate. In other words, what God was saying, you know, Psalm 24 says, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He owns the planet and all they that dwell therein. God created people. The devil didn't create anybody. The devil's not as big a big shot as he makes people think he is. Yeah. He's got Hollywood bamboozled into making him look big, bad, and ugly. But he's not near as tough and mean and all that as people think he is. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? That's right. He's a fallen angel. That's right. Therefore, he is limited to angelic level. Yeah. He doesn't come anywhere near God's level. Oh, right. Yeah. The Bible says that we were created by God and given dominion over the earth. God owns the earth, but he said, I'm going to create you and I want you to run the earth for me. I'm just breaking this down as simple as possible. Amen? Amen. So Adam and Eve walked with God, listened to the owner. If you were managing apartments, you wouldn't do your own thing. You wouldn't go paint those apartments any color you wanted to. You wouldn't rent it for however much money you wanted to. You stay in connection with the owner and you... That's Even right. though you're the manager, you have a certain level of authority over the apartments when you're there. Ultimately, he owns them. That's right. yeah. And as long as Adam and Eve stayed in contact with the owner, things went good on the earth. Yeah. One day, they listened to the enemy, and they began to uh, listen to his lies and do their own thing. And that's when a disconnect came, and they got into a situation where they actually got disconnected from the life and nature of God. That's right. Or, you could say it this way, the glory and life of God departed from them. Right. Mm. And so now they're in a situation where the enemy, because of deception, instead of having that, that glorious revelatory understanding that came by being one with God and His Spirit, Psalm 82 says that God has uh, crowned and surrounded man with glory and honor. Right. But God's nature and presence, His very fiery nature of holiness and perfection, consumed sin. So when Adam and Eve sinned, God had to pull back from them or he would have consumed them and destroyed them. Yes. It wasn't because he was mad at them. How would you like it if you knew that if you gave your kid a hug, you'd kill him? That's the position God was in uh, on, the, on the, in the situation. And so, as a result of that, of course, the, the plan began, began to happen where God began to move toward restoring man to that position of being a child of God. But the restoration wasn't just to get man and woman into a place where they had a ticket to heaven. Thank God for that. How many of you are glad you got one? Amen. 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 But it was to bring us all the way back to the fullness of glory. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you study the Bible, you'll find that the day is coming when even the very creation itself will once again be just drenched in the glory of God. Full of the glory of God. Amen. But God has given us, according to Ephesians here, God has given us a down payment on that day by putting His glory in us. Yes. Right. Now, He hasn't taken back man having dominion over the planet. The devil became the God, little g, of this world because he now was able, through his deception and that separation of man from God, to appeal to man's uh, mind, will, and emotions, his soul, and manipulate his thought life and push on his emotions and deceive him through the, the lusts and the desires of, of man and of the flesh 
the man began to be, bow his knee to the enemy, and the enemy was able then to rule and dominate in this world through that darkness and that deception. And that's what's going on in our nation today. Right. Yes. The guy that's running North Korea over there is dominated by demons. Yes. If you know who he is, what he's about, and what he does, he is dominated by the God of this world. And we see in Scripture where even Daniel, when he was praying, that there was a, a demon prince over Persia. It's called the Prince of Persia. That resisted angels that were sent to Daniel to give Daniel a message about the future. So this is all happening and still happening in our world today. Right. Now the enemy can only dominate a Christian if a Christian lets, it, lets him dominate. Right. Right. That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit so that we can walk in communion with Him in our prayer life and our fellowship life with Him Based on the Word of God, we can walk in the light, follow God, and not walk in deception and darkness. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that makes us a church full of His glory, a church that should be moving forward in that glory. And you and I need to understand that. And we also need to understand that every step you take forward in Christ, every level of glory you come to, you will be contested by the devil at that level. Right. He wants to push you back where you were at. He'd like to get you just right. all the way back. He'd like to, you know, if he could, he'd convince you to go commit suicide. Get out of his hair. Get out of his way. Right. You're, you know, you're a problem for him on this earth. But if he can't do that, he, he tries to just stop you where you're at or push you back. Yeah. Right. Right. And he does it through deception. Yeah. And so we live in a war zone. Yeah. A yeah. spiritual war zone. Don't have to be afraid. Don't have to be afraid. Amen. Jesus said, I'll overcome this world for you. Yes. You just walk with me. Follow my shepherd's voice. Yes. Let me be the king Messiah that I am. And I'll take you forward. And not only will you not be destroyed. Over in Psalm 91 it says, With long life will I satisfy you and I'll show you my salvation. Yes. He says when those things show up that come against people to kill them, He says you'll be protected. Right. Amen. 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 Praise God. But we live in a spiritual war zone. Yes. Yes. And we need to be aware of that and understand that. Thank you, Lord. Now here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Paul is, you know, he's been talking to them about how to become the glorious church and how to walk in these things. He says here at the end, these are the last instructions he's leaving this church. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Now notice here, he doesn't tell us to be strong in ourselves. That's right. You are no match for the devil. He's fooled people smarter than you and me. But he's never fooled God and never will. So what I'm going to do is instead of me trying to be strong in me, I'm going to understand what Paul understood, that when I'm weak, when I don't have the answers, when, I, when the enemy's plotting and planning against me and I can't figure it out as a human, you know, the devil's the invisible man. And he's doing all this stuff and I don't even know what's going on. I'm going to trust and rely on the Lord, and He's going to put His power and anointing in my life and His wisdom in my life so I can be strong in Him. Yes. Amen. 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 Be strong in the Lord, the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. Now notice in this, this war zone we live in, and this, this battle that's going on, it says first in verse 10, be something. Be what? Be strong. Verse 11, it says put on something. Now notice, it's not telling you God's going to do this for you. Come on, are you here? God, Jesus has done things for us. He got our salvation for us. Yes. The things He's done for us, they're established and they're done. Matter of fact, you'll see as we read in this that this is available because He's done some things for us. But just because it's done for us doesn't mean we're walking in it. Right. 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 If you had a million dollars in the bank and didn't know it was yours didn't know how to draw it out, it could be yours, it could be wonderful, it could be something that somebody maybe worked and put in there for you, but if you don't know how to connect with that, it's not going to affect your life at all. Yes. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So he says we need to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yeah. The word wiles here, <clears throat> old King James word, that means strategies, Methods and snares. Yep. Yes. 
See, the devil right now has got a meeting in hell about you. Oh, yeah. And he's not afraid of you as a person, but he knows who lives in you. And he knows that when you and God together are a majority, yes. he knows that you and God together can never be defeated yeah. as long as God is working through you. Yeah. And so he's hatched a plan and he's assigned demonic spirits against your life so that they can come and try to somehow manipulate you or deceive you. They have these uh, strategies that, that they, okay, we're gonna, here's how we're going to try to get John Purcell. This has worked with him before, so we're going we're gonna to hatch this plan. This is a strategy we're going to use against him. Right. And then it says that, that they, they use methods to do that. You know, if you're the kind of person that gets offended easy and has trouble forgiving people, the devil will line people up down the block to offend you almost every day of your life. <laughs> yeah. It's not about right. anything other than the enemy knows that God can't forgive you unless you choose to forgive. Yeah. So many people think forgiveness is a feeling. It's not. Feelings are emotions. Emotions are like the wind. One day they're up, the next day they're down. You can't go by emotion. You go by truth. This forgiveness is a choice you make in the heart. You still may be hurt, angry, upset in your mind. You may have to even restrain your flesh from punching somebody in the nose. You're so angry in your mind. But if you dominate your flesh with your spirit by the Holy Spirit based on the Word of God and you keep making the choice to forgive and to bless instead of curse and on purpose and you realize what's going on here, it's not about that person. That person's a, probably a pawn of the enemy being used somehow and the, the devil's trying to use them to take you down. And so if you fall into this trap of retaliation, all you're doing is you're letting the devil beat up on you and defeat you. Yeah. And keep from you something God wants to give you. Yeah. But God won't violate his word. He will not violate his word Amen. for you. Yes. He's a just God. Yes, he is. Amen. 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 That's a whole different thing. I'm getting, i got to watch these rabbit trails, man. I get up on these <laughs> rabbit trails and start chasing yeah. rabbits. Yeah. <clears throat> so the enemy has a plan against us. There's no doubt about it. And it, he has a strategy. He uses a method. And the bottom line is to trap you. Yeah. Ensnare you. Mm -hmm. I got you. I got you now. I got you in this deception. You know, there are people that have gone to church for 30 years because Sister Bucketmouth offended them 30 years ago. Yeah. Or Brother Black. Yeah. Or the preacher said this to me. Or they, they did this or they said that. Yeah. Don't go to church because of people. That's a wrong reason to go anyway. Yes, it is. There are no perfect churches. Yeah. And so if you find one, don't go there because you're going to mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We don't go to church because of people. We go to church to worship God. We're all under construction. Amen. 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 We need to understand that and stay with that. Praise God. So the enemy wants to trap us in some kind of deception like he did Adam and Eve. Now look, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. People are not your problem. That's right. They may be the, the, the instrument the devil's using, but they are not your problem. That's right. Yep. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. But against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, spiritual darkness that is, of this world, and against wicked spirits or spiritual wickedness in heavenly or high places. Yeah. The devil has his army set up. He has his pecking order. And he is working his strategies against people all the time. Mm -hmm. But it says back in verse 11, if we'll put on the whole armor of God, we will defeat him. Yeah. Look what it says in verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you. Take unto you. Now that what these words take unto in the Greek, the original Greek that the New Testament was written in, mean to seize. Therefore, seize. Grab hold of it. See, you've got to, you've got to be intentional. You know, soldiers, you know, soldiers don't can't be civilians. They'll get them killed. They can't have a civilian mentality in wartime. Amen. They can't just float along and think, okay, well, I don't feel like fighting today. It's a good way to get your head blown off. Sure. Right? Yeah. And the same thing is true where spiritual warfare is concerned. We have to take hold of these things intentionally. Take hold, it says, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you, he says, may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now this word withstand really means to resist. 
the temptation, the pressure, the attack, the enemy that brings against your life, if you will put on the armor of God, you will, and the armor of God, the armor is what? It's defensive. It's to keep a sword or an arrow or some kind of thing from hurting you, knocking you off of your feet or killing you. And he says, if you'll put this on, you'll be able to resist the devil in the evil day. What, what evil day? The evil day when you get attacked. Yes. When the enemy comes and attacks you, comes against you, tries to destroy your faith, tries to mess with your mind. That attack basically is probably going to be circumstantial in, that, in the natural realm, but it's, a, it's, a, it's intended and designed to mess with your mind. Yes. Yes. That's it. The warfare that takes place in your life takes place between your ears. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Amen? Right. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not of the natural realm, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And it, talks, it, it describes those strongholds as every thought that would elevate itself against the knowledge of God. The enemy's playing mind games with us. He does something in the natural realm. You know, you start praying and, and you believe, praise God, God's going to bless me financially. Then the, the TV breaks the next day. The washing machine breaks the day after that. And the car messes up the third day. And, and, you, and the devil says into your mind, yeah, right, you're blessed. Look yeah. what your God did. He let all this stuff. See, he's playing mind games with you. He's warring against your mind because he wants to build a stronghold. Yes. He wants to build a thinking pattern in your mind to where you see yourself as poverty stricken, as defeated, as never able to overcome. Because if that happens, then he's won the war. Now, he, he was defeated at the cross. How many of you know Jesus defeated the devil? But the devil didn't disappear when he got defeated. He's a spirit being, and he has the right to be here until Adam's lease is up on this, on this planet. And we read the back of the book, we know that the day will come when an angel will come and snatch him up and drop him in the bottomless pit for a thousand years during Jesus' reign on the earth. And at the end of that time, he'll be loosed for a short period of time. So the people who were born during that thousand years will have an opportunity to choose or reject God. And then when that's over, him and everybody that's in his kingdom are going to be thrown into the lake of fire forever, where they will be tormented forever and ever. See, spirit beings don't cease to exist. So hell is still real. I know that people don't like to even think about that. But it's true. There is a hell to shine. And so the devil is going to be dealt with, but he still has a legal right to be here. And even though Jesus ultimately defeated him where your life is concerned, he's still going to try to figure out a way to get you to buy into the deception that that's not true. And that he wants to be able to dominate and control you in some way. Right. How many of you found that to be true? You know, I love this word, uh, verse 13 here that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That word withstand is the same Greek word that's used over in Peter, where Peter says, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Amen. 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 The Bible says we are to resist the devil, and he will flee from us. Yes. Why? Because he doesn't have a legal right to dominate us in any way, shape, or form. When we're walking in Christ, when we haven't given place to the devil, that here in Ephesians, Back over in, was it chapter 4? No, uh, chapter, yeah, chapter 4. Uh, where is it up here? I thought I knew where it was at. Anyway, oh yeah, up in verse uh, chapter 4, verse 27, it says, Neither give place to the devil. Mm -hmm. yes. we, if you're not giving place to the devil, how do you give place to the devil? Well, number one, you don't walk in the love of God. Mm -hmm. If you don't walk in love, what do I mean by walking in love? Selfless life, not selfish life. Amen. If you're walking in selfishness, if it's all about you, then you've got the door wide open to the devil, and God can do very little to help you in your life. That's right. That's right. So it's true. Jesus never lived one selfish moment in his life. It was all about somebody else. He wasn't on some ego trip. He didn't run around with his feelings hurt. Right. Amen. One of the worst things that's happened to our nation is all these offended people. The Bible prophesied about it. Jesus himself said it would happen. He said in the last days, many shall be offended and betrayed me. Yes. And if you study James, the Bible says where offense is, where strife and offense is, 
that there's confusion in every evil work. See, so you've either got the door open to the devil or you've got clothes on yes. in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm a child of God. God's in control of everything. No, he's not. He's given you authority on the earth to open or close right. doors. Yeah. And if you choose to say, I'm not going to forgive my grandmother, then you have chosen to open the door to the devil and shut the door on the Lord. And you can pray until your tongue falls out and all your hair falls out, and you're going to see very little happen because the enemy has a legal right by your choice on this earth to be there. And until you line up with God and you shut the door on the enemy, it's going to be that way. Yes. I have people argue with me about that. And I'm telling you right now, I mean, I, I'm just like anybody else. There's times when I don't want to do something I need to do. Yes, it does. But I know I'd rather have, I'd rather look like a fool publicly right. and have to eat crow or whatever, however people want to say it. Right. And not have the devil in my life. Yes. Yeah. Because if, the, if I've got the devil in the door, he's going to do a whole lot more damage yeah. than any person that doesn't like me or whatever. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Lord, I didn't plan on saying all this stuff here tonight. <laughs> it says here in verse 13, when you can withstand and resist him in the evil day. And it says, and having done all the stand, well, what do we have to do to stand? We need to put on the whole armor. So let's get into the armor right here. It says, having done all the stand, stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth. Let me say this about standing. We don't fight trying to win a victory. We stand in the victory with the armor of God on us in victory. And the enemy is going to shoot at us. He's going to take pot shots at us. He's going to shoot flaming missiles at us, flaming arrows. He's going to try to use his sword and the spear, his words against us. But if we put on this armor, we have taken a position of victory in Christ. And it says, having done all to stand, stand in that victory. See, if you know that I'm, I'm fighting from a place of victory, it's a whole lot easier than thinking, oh no, i got to do something to get victory in this situation. Yeah, no. Amen. Amen. So that's another mind game that will play with you. He'll, he'll make you think that just because circumstances are the way they are now, just because, you know, uh, the situation is how it is now and a certain person you're praying for or whatever it is, that you've got to somehow go obtain this victory. No, Christ already broke the devil's power over the situation when we step in by faith into that, that armor of God and we stand in that victory, the enemy will shoot. It will be a battle. There will be a, a heated battle. We will have to stand. We will have to resist. But I'm telling you, ultimately, the bottom line is you will see the victory of Jesus Amen. Christ yes. demonstrated in that situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. We give you praise, Lord. Verse 14. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now the word truth here is actually the word sincerity. Where do you start? The Bible says in the Old Testament, God desires truth or sincerity in the inward parts. Right. He's talking about your heart. Yeah. You have to be sincere on the inside. You know, you heard my story about how years ago I read that scripture where God said to Abraham, Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. It says in the Old King James. And I read that and I thought, oh, brother, that's it for me. Because <laughs> I know I'm not perfect and I can't be perfect. Yeah. But one day I finally looked up what the word meant in the original language and it was the word sincere. sincere. Yeah. I can't be perfect as a person, but I can be sincere. I can have a perfect heart. I can be honest with my heart yeah. and honest with myself. As a matter of fact, I ran from my call uh, to the ministry for 16 years and nothing changed in my life. Everything started getting worse in my life and, and just deteriorating in my life until one day I got honest with God and honest with me about me. I got sincere in my heart before the Lord about my... I got sincere and, and was willing to accept truth, even truth I didn't want to hear. That's where you have to start with God. Yeah. Is be sincere, be honest in your heart with God. Now there again, I'm not talking about you just telling God all the mistakes you've made and all the just he has he has given you the blood of his son. He has cleansed you with his blood. But you have to deal honestly with him. Yeah. Remember King Saul, you know, the prophet uh, Samuel says, Go over there and I want you to destroy everything, all the people and all the animals and, and all that. And when he came back, he heard the bleeding of sheep, he heard the cattle and so forth, and he went up to Saul. He says, What's this bleeding of sheep I hear in my ears? And Saul says, well, it was the people, they, they, you know, they, they just wanted the cattle and they wanted the sheep. And so, and Saul, or, uh, Samuel looked at him and said, 
God does not look on the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. In other words, you're not being sincere in your heart. You're playing some kind of game here, trying to, to push off or deflect blame here in your, in your life for not obeying God. We've got to be honest. Yes. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I found that when I'm totally honest with God, he, He's able to reveal to me the real truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. And many times it's not what I think it is anyway. Yeah. So that's where we start. We have, we put on the, the belt of truth. We have sincerity in our heart. We always keep our hearts sincere. The breath, and then having on the breastplate of righteousness, a breastplate, covers the vital organs. A breastplate of righteousness. The word righteousness here is right standing. He, the Bible says, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Yes. Right standing means that it's as if you've never sinned. Mm -hmm. Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. Because we believe what Jesus has done for us and accepted him as our Lord and Savior, God accounts Jesus' righteousness, His perfection, His never sinning. He accounts that to us as though we had never sinned. Yeah. See, we're in Christ. Yeah. The devil doesn't want you to think that. He wants you to think that somehow you're still trying to be right enough. See, this is part of the battle. This is part of the... The warfare that come against you. Who do you think you are? I remember I used to pray, you know, for healing. And the devil would say things to me like, in my mind, he would say things to me like, well, yeah, sister so-and-so got her back healed, but she's a holy woman of God. And you know what, you, you lost your temper and said last week. Right. Yeah, come on. What's he doing? He's accusing my righteousness. He's, he's a, you know, saying, you, you're not righteous enough. Right. Yeah. Well, the Bible does say that as a human, my righteousness as a human without Christ is, are as filthy rags. Yep. But praise God, I don't have to stand in my righteousness. Thank you, right. Lord. Amen. I get to stand in His righteousness. Yes. Yes. That's true. Hallelujah. 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 He who knew no sin was made to be sin for me, Amen. that I might be made. Uh, when, did, when did you get made the righteousness of God? When you got born again. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. So we, 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 we put that on. We protect ourselves. When the devil comes and he attacks us, he shoots his flaming arrows of accusation, or he yeah. uses his sword of the Spirit against us. Well, you're not worthy. You're not good enough. You haven't done enough. You haven't prayed enough. You don't know the Bible well enough. Uh, somehow, somehow, you know, you're one of God's stepchildren. You're not his, his really his adopted child. Right. No, no, no. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. We've got to move on here quick. And your feet shod, verse 15, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, when you dig into this in the Greek, and you kind of separate it and pull it out and dissect it, what it means is, is that God gives you, see, what are you doing? You're standing in that victory. You know, if you're going to get in a fight, you don't want to have your feet slipping out from under you. That's a bad thing to happen. If you're in a sword fight with armor on, or you've got a spear or whatever, and your enemy comes up and hits you and down you go, you're in trouble. So it says here that we can stand in something called the preparation of the good news of peace. Now this preparation word here, it means, it's like a, it has the connotation of sure footing. It has the connotation of being able to stand. You know, Paul was, uh, you know, he was alive during the Roman Empire, and he saw these Roman soldiers, and, and, you know, a lot of people believe he was kind of using them as an illustration here in some of this. One of the things the Roman soldiers used to do is they used to put spikes on their, on their shoes. You know, we see spikes on football players, baseball players. They put these spikes, and when they would march in rank with their shields hooked together, they would march with these, these spikes, and many times they were, you know, the way they would do things, if you've ever studied that, as a, they moved as one man. The whole company or group would move as one man. And they would come up and they would just bowl the people over and then just stomp on them with those shoes as they walked over the top of them. And once you got stomped on, either stuck with that sword or stomped on by those shoes, how many of you know there wasn't any more warfare? Yeah. See, we think in terms of peace 
as just, you know, the birds are singing and the wind's blowing and the flowers are growing. <laughs> and that does have, uh, this word is Irene in, in the Greek and it does have that kind of a connotation, but it, it also, it's, it's, it's a warfare. See, it, it doesn't even seem like it's the right, in the right place. But, you know, sometimes you have to make war to have peace. Yeah, that's right. Sure. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, God, give me peace. Go kick the devil's rear end and you'll have peace. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Putting it bluntly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, help me. Help me. Do something about the devil. Nope. He already did everything about the devil. He's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, in the New Testament, there's no scripture that ever tells us we can pray and ask God to do something about the devil. Right. The devil's fate is sealed. Yes. Yeah. But it's a time element. Yep. Amen? Amen. But there are a number of scriptures that tell us. If we resist the devil, he'll flee from us. It says we are to cast out devils. Yeah. The scriptures tell us to whom resist steadfast in the faith. Yeah. <laughs> there are no, numerous scriptures that show us that we have the authority to do that. And if Adam and Eve had the authority to either let him in or kick him out. They let him in. You and I have the authority to kick him out yes. of our life and our domain and our, our areas of uh, dominion that he's given us Amen. in this life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he says, I'm going to put something on your feet, and where you walk, where I lead you, I'm going to give you sure footing. Yeah. And if you'll walk in dominion, if you study the Old Testament, you see that God spoke to Abraham, for instance. He said, I'm giving you this land. And he said, now walk to and fro, walk the length and the breadth of it, because I'm giving it to you. In other words, it's yours when you put your foot up, yes. when you walk it. He's taking ground. He's... He's possessing something that belongs to him. And so we can stand in that place and understand that as we stand and resist the enemy, then there's going to be a sure footing. We're not going to fall. You may feel like it. You may even get knocked down. Paul said, I've been down, but I'm not out. Amen. 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 I'm not down, but I'm not destroyed. That's it. Praise God. So. We have that kind of a situation as well. Verse 16, above all, or over all, covering all, taking the shield of faith. Now, those shields I used to use in that day were like a door. They were like a big old thing that just covered the whole body of the person. And they used to have an armor bearer that would run before them with that shield. And it was his job to keep that, that person covered with that shield. You and I have a shield called faith. Your faith, your trust in God. When you stand and you believe God, you speak God's word, you resist the enemy, there's a protective covering. Yes. What are they, like in Star Wars, what's that thing that, uh, that they have? What is it? No, not the force, the, uh, the, the shield they had that they couldn't get inside, you know? Force field. Force field, yeah, kind of like a force field. There's this supernatural thing that protects you from the enemy taking you out. And it's called faith. So whenever the devil starts shooting at you, put up your shield. When the enemy comes and he says to you, you're finished this time, you're not going to make it. Say, wait a minute, that's not what the Bible says. It is written and then start quoting the word. Start telling the devil what God has shown you about your future. Use your faith. Believe God. Step up. Begin to decree. Begin to act. Proclaim it. Well, what are the circumstances? They are the same for weeks and even months. Keep standing. Amen. Keep decreeing. Amen. Keep saying it. Amen. Use your faith. Amen. 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 Now, how many of you know faith is an act? Yes. Faith is an act. Yes. Faith without works is yes. dead, being alone. It says that having faith in you, having belief, having trust in you, but not acting on it, in James it says it's like a body without a spirit. Once your spirit leaves your body, the body is dead. It's, it's, it's not going to accomplish anything. It's going to lay there and rot. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So we can have a whole heart full of faith, but if we don't start exercising it by speaking, right. by, by yeah. doing, by believing, yeah. by standing, yeah. by praising God, by acting like the word is true, yeah. then it's going to be just worthless. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts, it says here, flaming missiles, flaming arrows, is what he was getting at here, of the wicked. Every thought the enemy shoots at you, every lie he shoots at you, 
Everything he throws your way, right. the shield of faith will stop that yeah. from taking you out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have the advantage over the devil. That's right. Mm -hmm. He can make it look bad in the natural realm. He can heat up the warfare. But he's picked the fight with the fight with the wrong person. Yes. Yeah. Because really, this is the armor of God. I remember years ago I heard one preacher preaching on this and he said, when you've got that armor on, the devil doesn't know the difference between you and God because it's not your armor, it's God. Amen. For all he knows, God's under that armor. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but if you think about it, that's what it is. Yeah. And the devil's got to get past God to get to you. Because yeah. this is God's armor, amen? Yes. Praise God. You'll quench every, every flaming missile of the enemy. Verse 17. And take. This word take in the original means receive. Amen. Receive. Receive the helmet of salvation. Receive the helmet of salvation. Now what does the helmet do? It covers your head. Yep. Amen? Now we talked about earlier about the warfare is between your ears. The warfare is in your mind. The enemy is going to attack your mind with thoughts. He's going, to, he's, going to, he's going to fight against your thought life because he knows that if you will accept his thoughts as truth in your mind, eventually they'll become belief in your heart. And Jesus said, whatever you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth, you'll have in your life. Yes. Amen? Amen. See, that's, that's, there's a method in the devil's madness. Some of us in here, we see ourselves right now in some areas less than God sees us, and it didn't just, you just weren't born that way, it just wasn't something that just happened to you or, or just automatic. Somewhere down the line in your life, whether it was when you were a child or an adult, you begin to accept the enemy's lies. Right. Right. And it's probably because you didn't know the word. See, people don't study the Bible, and so they don't even know how to defend themselves. True. True. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. People think reading the Bible is earning points with God. That's not earning points with God. I read the Bible because I need to read the Bible. Amen. Amen. I need to have the Holy Spirit, who's the author of the Bible, yeah. teach me yeah. the word of God. Yeah. You know, I've been to services where the anointing was powerful, and, and the anointing breaks the yoke. I've been delivered, I've been set free, I've been healed, things have happened. But when you walk right back out into the war zone the next day, yeah. you're going to find the enemy isn't over hiding somewhere. He's going to confront you, and he's going to try to play those mind games yeah. with you again. And the only thing that has kept me from going right back where I was at before was I had the word in me. I knew what the Bible said. And so when the enemy would come and say, blah, 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 I'd say, oh, no, blah, 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 blah. Right. Because of the word. You've got to defend yourself with the word. Thank you, dear Lord. But if you don't know the word, you're easy pickings. He picked you off real easy. Yes, he did. Amen? And I know this doesn't go along with certain contemporary teaching about the Bible, how God all in control, all we've got to do is just kind of yeah. float around on the puppet strings. And, you know, <laughs> it's never been true. That's nowhere in the Bible. Amen. Oh yes, God has his part. God, it's not my strength, not my power, not my wisdom, not my ability. I didn't go to the cross. It wasn't my blood, all of that. But, but he has his part and we have our part. Yeah, Amen. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. And this is our part. Yep. And I'll tell you right now, you don't have to worry about him doing his part. If you'll do your part, he'll do yeah. his part. Amen. Sure. Amen. 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 Praise God. Take or receive the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. In, in Romans chapter 12, we are told that once we get saved, that we are to renew our minds. Yes. The word renew there in the Greek means renovate. It means tear out the old ways of thinking. Why? Because your old ways of thinking have not been God's thoughts. They've been the world you're in. And the way the world is, this world has been touched with sin. And the ways of the world and the ways that humans think and do things and deception and lies. See, there are things we know, things we don't know, and things we think we know. Right. But God's Word is truth. And His, and His the Holy Spirit in you will teach you. And as you get in the Word and you ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, he will help you see things from God's perspective. I had a friend of mine went here recently, not too long ago. He says, well, I know you don't like to hear anything negative, but then he, tell me, you know, he shared something negative with me. And I got to think about it. I thought, what do you mean I don't like to hear anything negative? I'm not a 
opposed to hearing something that's negative. I just like to look at it from God's perspective. That's yes. Because right. Right. that's the only real perspective that's true. Yes. Amen. Yep. Amen? Yes. But if you don't know the word, you'll just look at it from your perspective. Or whatever demonic deception the enemy has been able to apply to your right. So you get in the word and you say, I want the truth. Yes. Yep. Lord, teach me the truth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Jesus said it this way when he was on earth. He says, Father, thy word is truth. Amen. And sometimes his word looks opposite of natural circumstance or what the enemy is saying. Yes. Or what your mama told you or somebody else said about you. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. And we need to stay with truth. Yes. Because his truth, the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. Yeah. It will stand true Amen. forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Take the helmet of salvation. Receive the helmet of salvation. What does that mean? Protect your mind with the mind of Christ, the thoughts of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. First Corinthians 2 says that the Holy Spirit will search the deep things, the profound mysteries of God, and make them real to you. And he will cause you to be able to understand them in your mind and in your heart. And when you accept that, it's like putting on a helmet. And when things happen in your life, and the enemy comes and says, well, look what's going to happen now, or look what happened now, this is the way it's going to be, you can put on a, the thought life of the mind of Christ and say, no, this is not the way it's going to be. Here's what the Word of God says. That's it. That's it. That's it. I have the mind of Christ. I have an anointed mind. The Holy Spirit's feeding me the thoughts of God. I, was, I went through a rough time back around 2000, and... You know, the enemy was attacking me on a daily basis in my mind. And I remember one day he came to me and he kept telling me I was going to die young. And, you know, there was just this constant uh, attack as he was just shooting those, you know, those uh, flaming missiles at me all the time. And I remember one day I was walking down the street and I stopped and I said, Lord, what do you say about that? That's it. And as soon as I said that, I heard in my thought life, Psalm 91, where it says, With long life will I satisfy you and show yes. you my salvation. Yes. Yes. See, the Holy Ghost will answer the devil every time. But I had to put on the mind of Christ. I had to say, Lord, what do you say? What do you want me to think about what the devil's saying to me right now that I'm going to die to? Right. And God says, with long life, I'll satisfy. So from that point on, that was it for me. That's it. Yeah. Every time the devil even hinted in my thought life that I was going to die young, I just laughed in his face. Yeah. I didn't necessarily feel like laughing. The spirit of fear was still there. I felt the presence of that spirit. But I knew, because <laughs> I know the word of God is true. Yes. Yes. And if God doesn't lie. And I knew Psalm 91 belonged to me as much as it belonged to David or anybody else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Praise God. So you protect your mind. Mm -hmm. Don't let him start all that mess. When he starts tormenting your mind and what about this and what if and what if and what if, you know, just stop and go, wait a minute. Holy Spirit, you live in me. Yes. Now, now study the Word because the Holy, it's the Word and the Spirit that work yes. together. Yes. 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 Some people want all, sp all spirit. Other people don't want any spirit. They want all word. But you need both. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Even in the recreation of the world, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit was hovering and brooding over the surface of the darkness of the deep. And then the word, God spoke and said something, and there was a conception between spirit and word that caused creativity to spring forth and the light and the power and the glory of God. And it's still that way. Amen. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will quote a lot of scripture to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So receive the helmet of salvation. I'm going to thank God's thoughts after him. Think about this. He's given you, 1 so Corinthians 2, the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus had a, an anointed mind. He did, the Bible says, he said this, I don't do anything unless I see my Father do it. Yes. He understood that his Father in heaven, by the Holy Spirit in him and upon him anointing him, would show him in his mind where he needed to go, what he needed to do, what he needed to be, what he needed to say. Yes. Amen. And the Bible says we have that, that mind in us now because he's in us. But we run around trying to figure it out on our own. Amen. Yeah. And finally, when we wear ourselves down, we're about ready to fall over. We stop and go, God, what are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> what we need to do is check with him first. Yeah. 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 And just get the issue settled right there. Amen? Yeah. Glory to God. Protect your mind. 
You may have to tell the devil, take your foul hands off of me in Jesus' name. I don't want you anyway. And then it says here, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema, or the word of God. The word rhema is the Greek word. The sword of the Spirit. Now all this, this stuff we've talked about up to this point has been defensive. It's been something to protect you from something. This last one is your weapon. It's the offensive weapon. It's the thing you can use to stick the enemy. Yes. To cut the enemy's head off. Remember David? He knocked him down with a rock and he cut his head off with a sword. Goliath's sword became the sword of the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Use the devil's own sword yeah. against you. You have to. <laughs> you got Amen. that. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. We yeah. thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So it says, the sword of the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the sword, the weapon of the Spirit of God, which is the rhema, is the word there in the Greek. It's not the word. Uh, Logos. Logos is the wisdom of God, the understanding of God. The Bible is the understanding of the Logos. We, we read it and we see the wisdom of God. Rhema is a literal, creative, spoken word that yes. God puts in your mouth yes. that goes out of your mouth in creative power yes. that is an absolute weapon. And angels, the Bible says the angels hearken to, that is they listen to and obey the voice of His word. Yeah. God's Word. So when God, the Holy Ghost, puts a word in your mouth and you speak it out, the angels, they know when it's John Purcell talking or it's the Holy Ghost talking through John Purcell, and they will take that and they'll go with it and they will enforce the victory as I use the sword of the Spirit. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. See, again, we should ask the Lord, what do I say about this situation? Right. Lord, what do you say about this situation? Yeah. Right. And when the Lord, see, when he, when he spoke to me that day, and he said, with long life I'll satisfy you. Now, that was wisdom, that was Logos, that was in the Bible, that was a scripture I'd read before. But that day, when I looked at him, he gave it to me in rhema. Amen. He spoke inside me. So when I put that in my mouth, it came out of my mouth with the same power that he released it in me. And it became a weapon against the enemy that the enemy had to obey because it was the strength and the power and the weaponry of God against him. Amen. And the angels were there to enforce it. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you are a powerful warrior. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Didn't even have to go through boot camp. Well, I won't say that. No. Some of us have been through some boot camp. Sure. Yeah. sure. Frank knows what boot camp's about. I don't know, <laughs> But you know, it's good. Boot camp's where they turn you into a soldier. That's right. They take you out of that civilian mentality, they'll get you killed in warfare, and they turn you into a soldier. Right. You know, it's wonderful to be a child of God. It's wonderful to sit on Daddy's lap and love Him and hug Him and feel His presence. And you know, it'll always be that way. Amen. But there's a time when you need to be a soldier. There's a time when you need to let Him turn you into one who can walk in victory. Yes. And serve. You know, if for nothing, no other reason, I want to walk in that victory for my children and my grandchildren, nice. for this church, for this city, for the places and the people God has given to me nice. to uh, enforce His kingdom on, yep. so that the people can be set free and they can have what God has for them. Praise God. A selfish person is a miserable person. Yes. Give your life for something. That's right. Give your life for Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you'll get attacked, but you know what? You're going to get attacked anyway. That's right. So you might as well get in the fight. Right. Why, why stand there and just get punched in the face? Get up and punch back. Amen. Amen. And when you hit him with God's fist, he's got problems. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you are, this paints a picture of you who you really are. As you receive these things from God, you know, you may want to go home and study this area of Scripture and ask the Lord to. You know, to talk to you more about it so you can begin to really identify with the truth of this scripture. But now look what it's all for, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Praying always. Yes, yes, yes. Why has he put his armor on us? Why has he given us the strength of his power? Why is he telling us 
You, if you're going to stand against the methods, snares, and strategies of the devil, why is all this true? Because you are in a war zone, and the devil is going to come after the body of Christ to try to defeat them, to try to divide them, to try to separate them, to try to limit them from being what God wants them to be, to be able to go into the fullness of the glory that he has for the church. Yes. Yes. So he says, pray always with all kinds of prayer, and supplication, word supplication means asking of benefits, in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Yeah. See, this prayer, this armor is prayer armor. Yes. The, the, the battle is won or lost in the Spirit in prayer. When the church stops, starts playing and stops praying, the devil starts winning. Yes. Our nation got in the condition it's in, not because the devil is so big and bad, it's because the church began to lean back into the flesh and begin to, uh, you know, begin to, to embrace their flesh and just think, focus on being having a natural life and the good things we have in the natural realm and forgot about the fact that the devil was plotting and planning warfare against them. And so one day we woke up and the devil almost taken over the nation. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And if you've been asleep long enough, and as blind as uh, some people, even Christians are, you don't even know he's taken it over. Yeah. That's a whole different subject. We won't go into that. So I'll just be honest with you. I'm amazed. How blind some Christians are. Yeah. Spiritual yeah. pastors, yes. You know, the devil wants to mix good and bad together and tell you it's good. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Because here's the answer, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer. Praying always, always, always. Your priority. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 6. He said, seek first in time. Here's your priority in time. Seek first in God's kingdom and what's right in his sight for you in that kingdom. Yep. You are first and foremost <clears throat> a child of God. Everything else that plays out in your life, in your, in your mind, in your natural life, comes out of your spiritual position in life and who's in charge in that spiritual arena of your life. If God's not in charge and he's not feeding you his revelatory word and you're not, you know, having a relationship with him where he can talk to you and he can use you and he can change you and he can do all that he needs to do, then the enemy by default is running your life and you don't even know it. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 Now this might not be good news to some of you, but I'm going to tell you what, this is the answer. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's the answer. Go back to study church history. We talk about revival. We talk about revivalists. We talk about this. We talk about that. You go back and study what it took for that to happen. Yes. It took the church getting on their face, yes. repenting for being prayerless, yes. repenting for not walking with God and listening right. to Him and seeking Him every day and letting Him have control instead of us dictating to Him, letting Him dictate to us. Yes. When that happened, that's when God came in and He took over in areas. Right. And we call it revival. Yes. Now I'm not talking about some kind of legalistic bondage. Oh, I got to pray four hours a day. If I don't, God won't do anything. No, what you got to do is walk with God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You got to just don't start telling God how you're going to do it. You're already back into it. <laughs> just say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Yes. Be like Isaiah. Here I am. God, use me. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna meet with you every day. I'm going to come and worship you and praise you. And, and I like to just, myself, the way I do it is, Lord, here I am. What do you need to talk to me about today? Yeah. What do you need to show me today? Yeah. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. God will teach you things that you might look at it and go, well, I don't really, that doesn't have anything much to do with my life right now. But he's preparing you against the future. So when the enemy shows up with his arrows and his sword, you'll already be prepared to offset what the enemy's doing. And a lot of stuff that would have happened or get traction and cause things to happen would never get off the ground. But notice he tells us here that we're to pray for all saints. 
we're to intercede for all saints. Yes. Yes. Now I've noticed something lately in the church, and just you know, you, you pick up things, you, you just sense things in the spirit. I don't know how else to say it. And the enemy, he knows. I can't go into all that though. I don't have time. He knows that we're at a time right now where everything in the world is shifting spiritually and will be shifting naturally. The enemy tries to take advantage during times of transition like that and mess with people. Because if you're going to shift with God, you've got to be open and let God talk to you. You've got to let him upset your apple cart if he needs to. You've got to let him change your direction if he needs to. You've got to let him show you things you don't know if he needs to. And so the enemy is afraid because he knows that when we shift with God and we begin to go into what he has for us, then that means we get promotion from God, we, we are elevated and expanded, and we begin to gobble up more of the kingdom of darkness and get people saved and get things into the right place and, and, and lined up. And so the enemy has come and he's attacked. And I, I keep hearing the reports of people that love God, that know God. But yet here comes this stuff against their mind. And the enemy's messing with them. So what do we do? Say, oh, I wish that hadn't happened. No. Oh, I knew that person wasn't sincere anyway. Oh, really? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Holy Ghost telling us what you know. No, we need to protect them. That's right. right. Yeah. What does it say here? Praying always is all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Yes. Watching, 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 watching yes. spirit. God will show you something. Yeah. He'll show you when the enemy is attacking one of your brothers and sisters sometimes. He'll show you what the enemy's got planned and plotted against you. He'll show you if you will pray with your eyes open and you'll say, Lord, I I'm going to go with what you show me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Or you see a brother or sister struggling or falling. Don't criticize them. Don't shoot the wounded in the army. Don't, you know, don't give them over to the devil. Go after that demon. Because ultimately their deception and their fall, yes, they may have rebellion or they may be stubborn or something like that, but the enemy has deceived them. And when you go, I found when you get the devil off of somebody or out of somebody, they change. They do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I remember one pastor friend of mine I was talking to him. Uh, I talked to this other pastor. There were some people that used to be, a couple that used to be in this one pastor's church. And then they went and they went to this other pastor that I happen to know to his church. And uh, this first pastor, I don't even know how the conversation came up, but he said something about, he, he mentioned those two people, and he goes, man, those people cause a lot of trouble in my church. And I thought to myself, well, I know they go over to so-and-so's church now, and they're like his right-hand man and people. Hmm. They're a great blessing and a great help. Wow. And so, later on after that, I happened to be with the second pastor, and I just, I, without divulging the whole thing, I just said, uh, so-and-so, you know, a couple that's in your church, I go, well, they're a great blessing, huh? He goes, yeah, they are. I said, well, I've just heard some things about them causing a lot of trouble in other churches. He, goes, he looked at me and he smiled, he goes, I cast the devil out. <laughs> he wasn't playing games, he meant it. Right. See, Christians can be dominated in their head by the devil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He said the Lord showed me some things about him. See, sometimes people don't understand that the devil's even got them under his control. No, right, right, right. You don't have to mess with, mess with the devil. You don't have to put up with him. Like no, amen. Any, any arena, and I know I'm perpetual about saying this, but any area of dominion you have, you can guard that. You can kick him out of that. That's right. I have to say whether the devil is in my home or not, or in my marriage or not. I, that's right. I have to say, I, I have to a certain degree, I have to say where this church is concerned. God does not give you responsibility without giving you the ability to respond. Yeah. And so when he set me in as pastor in this church to serve as a, as a shepherd here, and when I pray for you, I have a shepherd's authority. And if you study shepherd's authority in the Bible, the shepherd have a, a, an authority to protect the sheep. Now, if you want to be a goat and run off and jump the fence and go do whatever, I can't keep you from doing that. You've got a free will. Right. But people even that, have, that struggle in areas, yes. 
and the enemy's attacking them, I can go after the devil on their behalf and bring a measure of relief and a measure of light and a measure of help to them to where they can see what the Lord is saying and get things lined up. But see, what's the devil want us to do? He wants us to fight with people. He wants us to take it down in the natural realm. And then we end up with evil and evil and evil and confusion and every evil work and strife, as James says. Hallelujah. The Lord told me years ago, he said, if you don't want to have some of the church trouble that a lot of people, and I'm not saying we don't ever have church trouble, but he said, if you don't want to have some of the, tr the church trouble that some churches have, listen to me, I'll show you what kind of spirit's trying to get in the church, and you can take authority up over it, kick it out. And sometimes when you kick the spirit out, the person goes with it. Because they, they like that spirit. They're deceived by it. They want to keep doing what they're doing. Right. And so they'll leave with it sometimes. But sometimes it'll leave and they won't and they'll get delivered. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, we are in a war. Yeah. We have been given tremendous ability to stand in victory. Yeah. But we need to intercede. Yes, we do. Madeira will not change if we don't pray for it. That's right. That's right. If we just don't pray for this church, we just let it go and just assume, okay, it's all good, it's going to be good. The devil will tear this thing up one side and now the other. If you let, if you take that attitude toward yourself that I'm just going to float along on flowery beds of ease in life, I don't need to stand, I don't need to pray, I don't need to talk to God, let him talk to me. The devil will deceive you and when you stand before Jesus, I'm not saying you're going to go to hell if you're born again, you receive Christ, you're in his kingdom. But you will miss the very destiny and plan God has for you on this earth. Yes. Thank God for being able to go to heaven. But I want to glorify Him on the earth. Yes. I do not want the devil to win over me down here. Right. Amen. 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 Has this helped you at all tonight? Yes. Yes. Praise God. Let me turn to one more scripture and I'll close. I didn't intend on going this long, but you know how it is. <laughs> turn to Acts. Well, that's sometimes pretty much all the time, right? Okay. Acts chapter 4. Mike mentioned this scripture this morning, but I just want you to see a couple of verses here real quick to, to show you the authority. Now, as a person, you know, I've been talking about you as a person dressed in that armor. When we corporately come together as an army, yes. that's a different story. That's right. Amen. Amen? Amen? Here in Ephesians, or Acts chapter 4, this is where, of course, Peter and John had healed the man at the gate beautiful, and they got in trouble for it, and got threatened, and the whole church got threatened, and they came to the church. They came to their own company, or to the church. This is Acts chapter 4, verse 23. It says, Being let go, they went to their own company, and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they, they who? The church, the corporate group. Right. When they heard that, they lifted up their voice. And said, Peter and John, you guys in trouble, we're going to kick you out of the church. <laughs> no, that's not what they said. What did they do? They lifted up their voice with one accord and said, Lord, you're God. Yeah. Amen. Not the Sanhedrin. And has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, that in them is. Who by the mountain, they went on to quote scripture and pray. And, you know, brought, there again, they had the word of God in them. They brought the scripture before the Lord. Now look at verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth your hand to heal with signs and wonders uh, being done in the name of the Holy Child Jesus. Yes. So what did they do? They asked for God to accelerate his power. They asked for him to take the revival and the move of God to a whole different level. Uh -huh. But they approached this situation, this threat from the enemy through these governmental people they went to the one who is the government yes. over the universe. Amen. The throne of God is the ultimate court. Yes. <laughs> we have a supreme court, but the kingdom of God and the throne of God is the supreme court. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And they prayed, and it says in verse 31, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost yes. and began to speak the word. Then it goes on to say that the demonstrations and power of God became mighty. The enemy raised up and tried to stop this thing. They began to pray. Yes. 
They resisted the enemy in prayer and asked God to crank up the glory, to move in a greater way, and the light, the glory, and the power of God just overwhelmed what the devil was trying to do. Amen. 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 They went to bat for Peter and John. Yes. Uh, hallelujah. Yes. We need to go to bat for one Amen. Amen. It ought to make you mad when we get up here and say, Sister so and so is sick today. Right. I'm mad at her. No. No. Mad at the devil. Yes. Yes. Mad at the situation. Yes. It does. Amen? Yes. Now you can just get frustrated about it. That ain't going to help anything. No. But when you say, you know what? That's all right. I'm, I'm going to pray in Jesus' name. I'm going to intercede for that person this week. I'm going to stand for them. I'm going to remind the Lord every day. Lord, I thank you for touching them, for helping them, for sending your angels to them. God, if you want me to go and minister to them, I'll go. You talk to me, I'll go. But we need to fight for one another. Yeah. We need to pray for one another. Yeah. We need to you know, step up and do what it says over there in Ephesians chapter 6. Put on that armor of God and pray for all sin. I'll tell you, if you become committed to this and you really yield yourself to this, God will use you on a certain level. Yeah. And then if He finds you faithful, He'll start using you to pray for people that you don't even know about. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I know a, a man of God, he's in heaven now, but he gave himself to this kind of thing. And he would start praying. The Holy Ghost would come on him so strong. He'd start calling out names that he didn't even know. Praying for them. Yeah. And there was one guy named Donald Yeoman or something like that. That came out of his mouth. And he had no idea who this person was. And But he heard himself say by the Spirit. I command you to live and not die. You've got a ministry to fulfill on this earth. And all these kind of things. And his wife was there and they're looking at each other like who's that guy? <laughs> and a few months later they were in church. And they picked up a, a, a list of uh, prayer requests for people, and this guy's name on it. Yes. And he asked them, he goes, who is this? And they said, well, his mom goes to this church, and, she's a, and so he went and talked to his mom. He was a missionary overseas, and they coincided the times. They found out that the time he was praying for that man, that man was on his deathbed. They'd given up on him. I think he was over in, uh, what's the, the nation just north of Israel? Um, Syria. No, not Syria. Uh, just north of Israel there. No. All these Bible scholars. <laughs> huh? Lebanon, you got it. You win the prize, brother. <laughs> I was there, so. Lebanon, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he was a missionary to Lebanon. They'd given up on him. He was dying. And God put this thing on this man. He began to, to put on the armor of God and call out the man's name, command him to live. And he lived. He came home. They pioneered a church and, and built this big church, and then about 15 years later, it went home to be with the Lord. Glory! See, the devil wants to, us to believe that, well, it's the last days. The Antichrist is coming. You better buy some tribulation food and hide it. Buy a bucket of pizza or whatever it is. Now, I'm not saying that we don't need to be prepared for things. And, you know, take care of business and some of that stuff. But what I'm saying is, is the enemy will always paint the picture of him winning. Right. And let me tell you something. He's the biggest loser you've ever yes, seen. He, yes. he lost it all. Mm -hmm. yes. And God wants us to understand that he's yes. given us the victory. Yes. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph yes. in Christ. through Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, so, strap on the armor. Take your, take your position. Don't just say you want to be in the daycare of God. You know, I want to be one of God's little children in the daycare all day. No! Come on. It's time for you to grow up, walk, and stand up. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank God when we're young and we don't know, God cares for us and takes care of us. <clears throat> he still does that when we're old too, but we need to step up and become part of the army of God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you tonight. Let's just come into agreement of prayer right here, right now. Yeah. We take authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every one of us, Father, in here, in, in the arenas of authority you have given us. You gave Adam a garden. You told him, I want you to dress this, and I want you to keep it and protect it. Well, we answer the call 
to the, the arenas, to the places you've given us, the people you've given us, our children, Father, the, the city we live in, the block we live on, the job that we work at, those places, God, that we have been put in by you. We may think we got that job or somebody, but you put us there. You put us on this earth. You gave us some ground to protect. You gave us some people to watch over. And so we answer that call. We say yes to that call. We say yes, we will step up. We will put on the armor of God. We will pray for our brothers and sisters. We'll pray for those, even those we don't agree with or understand. Your word says bless those that persecute you. To pray for them, Father, that despitefully use you. And so right now in Jesus' name, we take absolute dominion and authority in the name by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I put every demonic spirit on, on notice right now in Jesus' name. You take your hands off of the body of Christ. You take your hands off of the, the people and the things and the places that belong to the people in this room under the sound of my voice. And I, Father, I ask you that the angels come flooding in. I ask you, Father, that your spirit begins to be poured out. I ask you, Heavenly Father, that your mercy comes down. Thank you that the, the, the mercy seat of, 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 of God there in heaven, Father, the blood of Jesus that's crying out mercy, that has provided mercy for us. We draw on the mercies of God. Let the mercies of God rain down upon the dare of California. Let it rain down on these families in Jesus' name. And Lord, we stand our ground and we decree. And from this point on, Lord, we stand in faith on these situations. And we look to you and I thank you that you will put a ring of word in our mouths. On a daily basis, you will show us what to say. We will not look at that situation or that person and judge it based on what it looks like now. We will judge it based on what you say in your word and what you show to us. And we agree with the decree. We agree with what you decree from heaven. We agree that in Jesus' name, that the time is now and that things change in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we praise you for it, Father. We give you praise and honor. Because we are strong in you and in the power of your ability. We thank you for it in Jesus. Hallelujah. I take authority over every, over every tormenting spirit that's harassed. There, this is what I'm picking up right now by the Holy Ghost. There's people in here, there's been a stronghold in your mind where the devil has tormented your soul. He's tormented you. And I break that thing down. If you'll receive this, I break it down in the name of Jesus right now. I command the bricks of that stronghold to fall. I, I command those thoughts that have been assembled like bricks to build up a fortress in your mind. I command every one of them to crumble like the walls of Jericho. I say in Jesus' name, the enemy's lie comes apart. It's exposed for what it is. It falls helpless and hopeless to the ground. I command the spirit of fear to take his hands off of you in Jesus' name. I command the life of God to flow through you like a river. I command your mind to be delivered in Jesus' name. I say that you'll have the dreams and the visions of God. I say that you will know by the spirit of God what to do, what to believe, what to say. You'll see clearly in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Because your thought life will not be clouded and tormented any longer, glory to God. And that you will dance upon injustice. You will rejoice in your victory in Him. You will shout unto God with the voice of triumph. You will clap your hands, praise God. Hallelujah. You will have the victory, glory to God, that He's bought and paid for for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And like Mike said this morning, do not let him play. Let the devil play the time game with you. Do not let him. Don't get into the how long, how come, when. It's done. Every time you think about it, you just have a Holy Ghost dance party. I'm serious. Because when you praise God, he inhabits your praises, the Bible says. He comes and he enthrones himself. In your, in your life and in those situations. And when, he, and when he's on the throne, he rules. Nobody else. Nothing else. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's just stand and praise him for a minute this night. Hallelujah. The army of the Lord. I
hear the sound yeah. of the army of the Lord. I hear the sound of the army of the Lord. It's the sound of praise. It's the sound of war. The army of the Lord. The army of the Lord. The army of the Lord is marching on. Let's sing that again. Sing it faith. I hear the sound of the army of the Lord. I hear the sound of the army of the Lord. It's the sound of praise. It's the sound of war. The army of the Lord. The army of the Lord. The army of the Lord is marching on. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We are your army. We are your army. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Okay, I heard this word uh, before church started. I heard the Lord say to me, Wormwood. And, um, I don't. I didn't even know what the heck we were talking about. Wormwood, great, Lord, thanks. That's awesome. What is it? So, of course, I went to trusty Google here on my phone, and the definition of there's two definitions of wormwood. Now, and I, and I read it, and so the Lord started talking to me about this during service. Dad even touched on it tonight a little bit, and I touched on it quite a bit this morning actually. One definition of wormwood is a woody shrub with a bitter, aromatic taste. Used especially formally as an ingredient of vermouth and ab vermouth and abs acid, I don't even know what it is, and, and, and in medicine. Okay, so I don't even fully understand any of that. But here's the number two. This is the definition that really stuck out to me. And this is where the Lord started talking to me. Uh, definition number two. A state or source of bitterness or grief. Mm -hmm. And, um... That's, Dad touched on this, I'm going to be real quick. Bitterness and grief is a doorway of the enemy. Yes. Yes. If you can get us in bitterness, and if you can get us in, over into grief about something, even grieving uh, 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 for a loved one, or even grieving over your own self or something for a period, for a long period of time when the grieving should be over, the devil can use that avenue, that grief or that grieving or that bitterness, he can use that avenue to come in and to, like I was talking about tonight, play soccer in your mind. Yeah. And deceive you. Right. Now I heard that word wormwood, and I'm like, okay, but as, as, as the night went on, the Lord started talking about, don't allow bitterness or grief. Now is a time that we never should do that, but now specifically is a time that we we have to walk in love yeah. to fully accomplish the fullness of God. So it's wild how the Lord will say things like that because He doesn't want us to take that wormwood, <laughs> whatever it is. And there's also scriptures in Revelations. Uh, it was Revelations eight. Chapter 8, verses 10 and 11, it talks about wormwood in there and this kind of stuff. So there's even some biblical definitions and some biblical scriptures about it in the Old Testament and the New Testament. I'm going to do some more research on it. But don't let bitterness and don't let the grief Amen. hold you. Because that's what gets your mind over into that realm where fear, anxiety, panic, the attack of the enemy, you know, sorrow, all that stuff. Yeah. Amen. He's a liar. Amen. We win. Amen. Glory. Take your position as a prayer warrior. Yes. Just tell the Lord, you know, just I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm going to intercede yes. for my city. I'm going to intercede. I'm, I'm available, Lord. Yes. You don't even have to draft me in the army. I volunteer. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So, Father, this week, yes. use us. Yes. Use us, yes. Father, to pray for others, to pray for the body of Christ. In Jesus' name. We're not stepping back. We're not stepping aside. We're stepping up. Hallelujah. Yes. In the name of Jesus, and we're moving forward in you. Yes. Now, Lord, I thank you for blessing every person. Under the sound of our voice tonight, let the, this week, Father, be a week of encounters and a week of knowing you better than they've known you in the past. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a good week.